everybody, it's Sophie and Marco dishing out on the movies. And today we are on, what number is it? Number four? Yeah, four out of five. Four out of five. The fifth, fourth movie that I have been designated to watch that's horrible and should turn me totally off. No, forced. Forced to watch and... It, the movie was called Super Bad, and maybe some of you have seen this. I would never have watched this in a million years, ever, unless I was asked to do it, which I was asked to do it for this challenge. And it was really funny because uh, this was one of those movies that I thought, you know, Safi's never going to watch this. and <laughs> Because I just thought, like... It would be like just nothing that she would want to watch. You're right. Because she's so obsessed with these gay Hallmark movies. No. And and so I thought it would be fun to do it. And it's a really good movie. So, uh, and really too, I actually could have picked La La Land. Because we were watching a movie and talking about Emma Stone and I was like, oh yeah, Safi doesn't want to watch La La Land because of the title for that too. And so that would have been something funny to force you to watch. And there is there was a little story with this movie. There was this one day in uh I think mid of uh, uh middle or high school early high school where Safi was coming in the living room to bring me chicken sandwiches which is a uh, chicken uh, leftover chicken mayonnaise and bread and she was <laughs> coming in to bring those to me for dinner and and she overheard some of the lines from the movie and she got really uh, offended and upset and she started screaming before leaving the room like she was just so offended that like she had to hear that and she was like <clears throat> acting like some sort of a pansy ass Mormon or something. <laughs> so Safi? Well, I <laughs> I guess it I have mixed reviews of the movie. I can see how uh it would be like you know, they're seniors in high school, they're getting ready to, ready to graduate. You have two best friends who have they they even said it, I believe, in the movie. They had been together as friends since they were like little kids, little grade school kids, like eight years old or something. And so uh, one of them was obsessed with his genitalia, <laughs> and that was Joni Hill. And I really don't care for him at all. And he's a loudmouth, flabbermouth jerk. And... The other guy's Michael Sarah. I didn't really know him at all. They're both, well, I don't know about Jonah Hill, but Michael Sarah, and then the other guy, uh, do you know his name? The, he's played the uh, very skinny, young, dark-haired guy with glasses. And yeah, Faggle. Fogel. Faggle, a.k.a. And McLovin. McLovin, yeah. He, um, you know, I had that t shirt too. I still I have it. That. Still have it. In I fact, see now where it comes from. Beat that. And uh, they each have equal amount of time in the movie. Plus, there's Seth Rogen and Bill Hader, and they play cops, and their parts are very, very funny. And you know, they're adults. All these others are they are young men, they were about. Does this movie? Yeah, there it is. This movie came out in around 2007. Well, the age of these guys is exactly the age, and they were graduating from high school. That is exactly that year they would have been graduating from high school. Because I have an older son named Jim, and he uh, is their age. So. I don't know about Jonah Hill. I'm not really sure how old he is. I didn't the, look him up because I don't care for him. But anyway. The funny thing about the shirt, too, is that uh, all the teachers didn't care. And then there's this other kid, and he would wear the shirt, too. Mm. And sometimes we would both be wearing the shirt, and we'd be in you-know-who's scholarship English class 
sitting in the back, you know. Yeah, I do. Mrs. B I T C H. Yeah. And uh, we would wear that shirt all the time. And well, it's a cool shirt. I mean, and it, it's a it's a red shirt with uh, McLovin's fake driver's license on it, which says he's from Hawaii. And he's 24, 26 years old. And it's really funny because he just has this, like, terrible expression. Like, he just looks so, uh... <laughs> like, I don't know, like, maybe he's trying to look like he's older and he's just like a... I don't know, like, he just looks so rude and and just unfriendly. And it's, like, totally the opposite of his personality in the movie. And so it makes it even funnier. But anyway, this, I just, I guess, it, you know, this is kind of like for a boy. I, I'm not really sure. I mean, there's this, tons of girls know, they talk in the movie. About, they, they all, f- they all think it's funny. And they're, it's their last year, and they do all these things. Well, this is the boys. It's the boys' turn. It's their last year. You have these good friends, and then McLovin and Michael Sarah. They're going to the same college. They're going to Dartmouth, I think, and they're they're going to be rooming together. And the other guy, uh, Jonah Hill, who's Michael Sarah's best friend, he did not make. Oh, did I say Dartmouth? Yeah, he didn't make the grade there, and so he's going to be going to some other school. Which I don't know if they said it or not. It doesn't really matter. Like he said, did he say state? Yeah, he said state, a state college, but I don't know what that means exactly. I don't even know what state they're in. I don't Whatever know where, state they're in. I don't know where Dartmouth is. And um, well, Dartmouth that might not even be in the state that they're in in the movie. That's true. That's so. true. Um, so anyway, the the thing is, Jonah Hill guess his character was not smart enough or had good grace enough to be at Dartmouth and these other two boys did and it used to be that Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah were best friends like I said they'd grown up together and they would do everything together they wanted to go to college together but now it wasn't going to happen and things were going to change and so it's all about like you know what was what was gonna, what was happening? What was going to happen? And then this thing with girls and getting laid and all this uh, drinking. Well, the the plan is is that they want to go to this party, and they have been a, they have been put in charge by the main girl putting on the party well, to get alcohol, alcohol. Yeah. and they want to use the alcohol to basically grease up the girls to make them more amenable to uh having sex well n- n- well really though it it's to make them their girlfriend like they even say near the end of the movie like they didn't expect to have sex with them they just expected to like do a little bit and then they'd be in a relationship for the summer yeah and so it was like that's true it was funny because uh, as soon as the movie started, Safi, she was going like, "Oh, gross! Yeah, gross! Because it was gross. It gross! Was all this, I don't know, oh, just gross. Fil- filthy humor. And it's that so I'm not funny. Care for. But Why? If you, if you, you take, were laughing the whole movie. If you take the movie in total, as a whole thing, if you don't pick out these parts that you just don't care for, the movie as a total package. He's a pretty good uh, coming of age. It's a very uh, good I'll movie. Be crude in, at some points, but you know Bill Hader is in it, and um, Seth Rogen. And Seth Rogen actually wrote this when he, when he and a friend when they were a kid, when they were kids. And anyway, I'm glad it wasn't just quote the kids who were doing the movie. It was also these adults. Because you had parts with them, and they were it, because they're both so good anyway. They uh, they added a lot to it too. So it was a very uh, multi-dimensional movie. It wasn't just yeah totally focused on like, that's certain what, things. That's what so that's what was that's good. what you have to do. You have to take the 
the movie as a total project, not just pick out parts you don't like. So, but he did want me to evaluate the movie, review it, but, and I'm saying what I yeah, really, I, I mean, I don't like that uh, crude humor at all, but Why? still. You laugh throughout the whole movie. <laughs> you you I like I like the parts, especially with Bill Hader and Seth Rogen. I thought they were really good, yeah. and uh, they are. I mean, Bill Hader... I don't know about Seth Rogen necessarily. I don't like Seth Rogen at all, but yeah, but I do uh, like Bill Hader. He this is movie. really a primo comedian, and I've known that for years. He, he's been on Saturday Night Live, and just and now he's been doing this series. Is it Bill or something? I don't know, but I've never seen it. But he was so good. I mean, he has so many characters. He's, he's just very good. He's from Oklahoma, of all places. He's pretty underrated as an actor because in this movie, it's not just the comedy. Right. And that's another thing is that a lot of comedies nowadays, they're not comedies, they're dramedies. Because yeah. most of the movie is just drama, drama, and it's like they sprinkle in the comedy because they know that nobody gives a fuck about dramas. Unless they're for the Oscars, uh, Oscar bait movies. Yeah. And so, I really liked how in the movie they blended a lot of comedy with a little bit of drama underneath everything. And yeah. then another thing that's good about the movie is the span of time. Like, you really feel the going through the school day, going through the evening, going through the night... Like, it feels like a full-on experience rather than just a movie experience. Like, it feels like you've gone through the whole entire amount of hours with them going throughout the story. Yeah. Yeah, it's not... Because sometimes when you, you have that whole movie experience where you're going through weeks and months... You don't it even know how long it is. Yeah, yeah, you don't know, and then it just kind of, it seems to drag. This one, it was just, uh, it was kind of, I mean, you're. it's almost like you're following them in the day and the life of. Yeah. And, and but without being too spe specific. So, I mean, it just, whatever they did, the timing, the, the, the everything. Pacing. Like, pacing. The, it, the, it worked out. Um... I just, I just, some of the humor, I don't like it. But yeah, you just, did. You no, laughed at the whole movie. No, I didn't. You laughed at the whole movie. What I was the funniest don't like joke? Those boys. What, uh, well, I, I and think. I don't like uh, Jonah Hill. I think at all. he's fantastic. I, I think stand him. his perf A plus performance. Mm -hmm. You always have to have these types of characters and these comedies, and that that's one of the things to talk about is the. You know, Safi hasn't seen a lot of these types of comedies. No, I don't want to either. Well, I have. And of course you have. There's it's meant to be play to you. That's a lie, Safi. There's all these women that are they're in the they're in the movie, like fucking Emma Stone. Emma Stone Oh yeah, from I think La 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 seem familiar. Well who cares? Emma Stone from La La Land. <laughs> This is her first movie, Safi. Oh, yeah. She was a Malcolm in the Middle before it, but this is her first movie. Yeah, I just put on here and wrote, I can't stand Jonah Hill. It's like, fuck off, Safi. I like, know what Jonah and, Hill is doing now. Oh, he, he did a ter He just did a terrible get woke, go broke movie. Oh, really? Where He's been in so many it's, different types of movies. It's Lost basically, and everything. It's, it's an agenda movie. And it's basically a reverse guess who's coming to dinner uh, where he's dating this black girl and and Eddie Murphy's in it and it's just like the most racist, agenda filled, um, anti white people movie in history. That sounds stupid. And it's like, oh <laughs> like it's really sad what Jonah Hill has become because I, I don't know, he just it, he feels different now. Like he, he doesn't feel like the character in this movie. Well, like, he, he the last thing I saw him in was a wolf on, wolf on wolf, wolf Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Well, so. wolf of Wall that was twenty thirteen, Safi. That was still well, a long time ago. I should uh, say I don't care for him, and I don't pay that much of attention. But that's the last time I saw him. And he did movie. do. He was good in that. 
Yeah, uh, he was very good. In that. But but now he to me he's almost like a he looks like a like a like a pedophile businessman who works on Wall Street even more. Like he looks he he I don't know. Like there's just something about him now. Like it's the same way with like a Tom Cruise. Like mm. that's what it kind of feels like, but you always have to have these types of characters and that's the thing. When you talk about these types of comedies, there's a couple of problems that you always run into, especially when you watch a lot of them at the same time. Yeah. And one of the main issues, which I would agree with, but I don't really care because if you put on super bad, and you know that that's what the movie is, but the, one of the main issues of these types of comedies is that all the characters in the movie will talk about is uh <laughs> is uh sex and like that's all they'll talk about the whole movie and it's like this is not how normal people talk in real life unless they're addicts like David Duchovny and Californication and oh, so that's what I was beginning to wonder if Joan Hill was this was an early sign of him being a sex addict no because he had all those he what he would do and this is in a way, it's a little comical, but I find it really bizarre and weird. He, oh God, he would make, he would do uh, uh, drawings of the male genitalia, and I mean, <laughs> some of them were genitalia. really very well done. Well, he didn't I, draw. <laughs> I was going to say, I, they must have had different artists, because they all have, were kind of like from different different styles. No, it was one guy who did all the drawings. Oh, really? He drew like a thousand drawings. Oh, my God. Well, anyway, he would do just as a kid, a young kid, like in grade school to, uh, to middle school type of kid, he would do these drawings, and then he would fold them up and put them in his lunchbox, which was, what did you say? It was a... Ghostbusters. Uh, Ghostbusters. I can't... So you, no, you, I, you yeah, like that I, sequence. I thought that was really odd and <laughs> bit, bit, you know, and bizarre. And I've never, and then, of course, he got, something happened in the classroom. He got found out. He sent to the principal. They call his parents. Didn't they get him counseling? And they, or they talked about getting him counseling? They got him counseling. But, I mean, does that really ever happen that I, kind of thing. I think thing. it might. I think it is very rare though. Uh, I mean he was just totally preoccupied or obsessed or whatever you want to call it. And, it. and it's so funny how they stop the whole movie to have this like extended sequence where yeah. it's just it's just, it's just all about that. Because you know <laughs> but previous to that I mean they're talking he and his friend Michael Sarah. I don't even know what his name is in the movie. And yeah, I they bet you just know. talk about that, especially Jonah Hill for the most part, talking about having sex with uh, these girls and just all this stuff and just like laying it on full blast. And, and the reason like why. Standing in front of an air conditioning. The reason why, really, to me is because with comedy, you never know what jokes people are going to laugh at. Um, and so, so you throw it all to the wall yeah. and see what sticks. And I think that it's a good thing to do that because then people can have all their different favorite parts of the movie. Like, my favorite part of the movie probably wouldn't be Sophie's favorite part. Like, I think... No, of course not. We're, we have a big age gap between us. Well, the funniest part, like comedy with anyone. And so I think it's good to have a lot of that stuff shoved into the movie rather than just oh, okay let's just have a couple of little jokes and that's it like no that really doesn't work those types of comedies are failures you know like uh right off the bat Sophie, what's a bad comedy legally the born hot, too hot oh that one's horrible i was thinking one of those hot tub the hot tub? Those movies with the men in the hot tub. Oh, don't you dare talk about hot tub time machines. So oh. Don't you dare talk but about more that. there's one, right? Yeah, the second one's trash. That's what I'm talking about. Well, you never saw it. You don't know anything about it. Fuck off with that shit, Sophie. No, you've said that. You just said it now. It's trash. 
Well, you, you so. didn't know that. You, what are you trying to read my mind? Whatever. I but no, know. that's not an example. Okay. Well, I don't no. know what to, what example to give because I I don't I haven't really watched that many. There haven't been that many good ones to watch well, they as don't, of late. They, I mean, well, really, as of late. That's know. because if they make a comedy now, they they they're afraid of offending anyone. Oh yeah. And so they just don't want to make any comedy. Oh, unless it's about women. It, it can only what. be female-oriented, and that's the only way they'll make it. Well, I don't know what... I don't know what they want now, because... Uh, there's nothing out there. It's almost as bad as the horror movies that they've made and ruined. Like Halloween Ends or whatever, those movies are... Sucky. Well, Safi, I would have to say my favorite part of the movie. Well, I, I, well, the whole movie is my favorite part of the movie because <laughs> I, I would say it is one of the best movies. Uh, but I would say probably my favorite part, and I, and I would say too to only watch the unrated version because there's so many more things that you wouldn't get oh. in in the regular version, and okay. so and that's I. That's what we watched, right? Yeah. I think that uh, the sequence where they're in the class and he's making tiramisu with them a stone is, yeah, is, I was just is the best about part. That. I was just thinking about That's that. That's the funniest part of the movie to me. And I can't believe they're making tiramisu. Well, they got tiramisu. It doesn't even look like tiramisu well, either. At least the one they make it, it looks, with lady fingers. Yeah. They put them on the outside as, as a, you know, instead of a pie crust or you know, a cake pan mold, they put lady fingers on, uh, they they line the perimeter of the cake with lady fingers, which are li like little sponge cake pieces. They're like uh, fish sticks, only they're little cakes. The way that it looked, though, it looked like a... It was very messy. It looked like a pile of crap. It didn't, it was too, the lady fingers were gigantic. It, it didn't look that good. I think they made they made the lady fingers too. She so this is a whole met class that he was talking about, and, and I never took that class. Did they even have it? They had it in middle school a little bit, and I said "fuck you," <laughs> because I because well, I don't. Marco cooked at home. We had yeah. Marco was in four H, so he had tons of opportunities to cook. Well, I cook he still on does my own today. Yeah, I cook on my own volition. I don't, yeah. I don't want to cook in school with people in school. Yeah, like fuck that. Yeah, then, and usually, I think that they were kind of cutting down on those types of classes, which is is kind of a shame. But they, I think they needed to redo them. But uh, well, they're cutting down on them because they think that women shouldn't know how to cook anymore. I don't know about that, but I, we had home ec in my school, but I wasn't really into it. I, I took it because I had to. You had to take that kind of, a, I don't know what it went under, what category, but we had to have that kind of credit as part of our graduation. So, but uh, I had every opportunity to cook at home too. So, you know, and, and but Marco was in 4-H club and he took cooking projects, so did my other son and uh, they got plenty of experience. They didn't need to take any home ec class. They even did sewing, and uh, they did woodworking and uh, outdoor like, fishing and uh, filmmaking. Yeah, all kinds. They, they they were exposed to many different experiences with 4-H clubs. So yeah, people, like being in the club with a pedophile. Okay, don't say that. <laughs> it's really. true. Anyway, it's true. Okay. Sophie. Uh, Marco, be quiet. <laughs> you, so anyway, know. Um, you know. Sophie. Marco, you, know. you know, You <laughs> know. So anyway, uh, he didn't need home ec, but anyway, this was a home ec class with Emma Stone and Joan Hill, and both Don't, of don't them, explain the scene, Sophie. Well, they, Stop they, explaining that's things. That's what we're talking about. Stop. That's why they were... I already did that. I just oh, did, did that. I did that like five minutes ago. Oh, okay. I said, that's the... What would you say the best scene of the movie is? Well, I like I, I like that one too. 
You didn't uh, think it was I, funny. You know, I kind of liked it with the boy with the glasses, with the, the fake uh, license. The His boy McLovin, with the glasses McLovin, and the fake license. McLovin uh, in, with the cops at the end and they're uh, and they wreck the shooting car. up the police car. Well, they have to wreck it because they, they don't want to, they can't give like a valid reason for why the windshield broke oh, or anything. So they, they have set to it on destroy fire. the whole thing. Yeah. And I just thought he, it was so funny too because the way they presented it at the beginning, you didn't think that that kid was going to have any success at doing anything. Yeah. He had the ID and he was going to go, and then the ID, first of all, on his name, it was a fake driver's license from Hawaii. It just had one name. It didn't have a first and last. I don't think that would ever happen. Really? On this, no. And then... But people like that exist. Yeah, nowadays maybe. I don't know. I just... Uh, but they even said, the cops said that they knew that he was an underage kid. They knew that he was not of age. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh, that he was 26. I, I think that's what he was supposed to be. And he did not look... I mean, he looked think, so young and immature. I His thought it was 25. His voice was like in the middle of changing. Yeah. And he just, you know, really... And he was very skinny. And... Uh, but so anyway, he he seemed to have more because they like they kind of adopted him. Bill Hader and Seth Rogen kind of adopted him. They took him everywhere. They took him into the bar. They drank with him. Uh, they let him shoot the gun. He was in the back with the perp from another uh, fight, and uh, I mean they took him everywhere. They and he so he got to have a lot more adventures, or more than I ever would have thought the way they were directing at the beginning. It was like really focused mainly at the beginning on Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill, but they turned, but he got as much of a part or a story or experience that night for that whole 24 hours as much as they did. It was just maybe ex different. It was oriented in a different way, but they all ended up in the end meeting at this one spot. And that was and one that of was the... just happenstance, too. An, another great thing about the movie is how it subverted typical comedic tropes of these types of movies because in these types of movies, the, the nerdy characters usually end up in a poor position by the end. Yeah. And they never really get anything right. at all. But that's not and true so, in this movie. In this movie, it's like he gets... He just gets, he, he can do one. whatever he, gets, he wants. I know, he does, and it really and, surprised me, and I kind of like that part, yeah. because like Marco says, that doesn't usually happen. It's a full package, though. I mean, yeah. if you took out that movie, it wouldn't be as good. Uh, it would just be like a C plus. but since you have all that stuff together, it's an A+. plus. It's like a full package of like all these parts coming together at the end, uh, I wouldn't say there's really any flaws with the movie at all. Well, I like I said, I don't care for some of the humor. It's very childish, and I, and like I said, I don't care for Jonah Hill. Well, that should be the thing, Safi. You should have. Let's just. But I admit, don't think I care for him now either. The way Marco's describing him, so this movie maybe somewhere in the middle. This movie should be shown to children. Like teenage uh, kids, I don't know. like oh. teenage kids, like this is a movie for teenage kids. Yeah. This is not a movie exclusively for adults. No. And I think that that's one of the stupidest things about the rating system, is the fact that you have a movie like this, where the people who wrote the movie, they wrote it when they were 13 years old, mm -hmm. and then they make the movie for real, and then 13 year olds can't go to see it unless they have an adult with them. I mean, it, that that's just the most fucking retarded, backward thing I've ever heard. And it's like, no, teenage kids should be shown this movie. Like, they shouldn't be banned from... Like, no, this is targeted towards them. The humor is their humor. It's mm -hmm. not humor. Usually, like, adult humor 
is a lot like it, but I would say like it, it's a mix. You know, it's primarily towards teenagers though. This yeah. movie, I wouldn't you agree? I suppose. Come on, Sophie. Some of the sexual stuff. <clears throat> you know, in high you school, really went way too far. You I mean, know, in high really school. Le- well, my and, high school was a little bit different. Well, yeah, you you went to high school with a bunch of weirdos and that, hillbillies and yeah, hillbillies. racists and sexists and. Uh, probably related to slave owner families and stuff. Everybody's like, related to a slave owning <laughs> family, unfortunately. Like, uh, you know, you went to high school with some really strange people. And, you know, they were so strange that, you know, they wouldn't talk like normal teenage kids. I don't know about so, that. So well, it was backward. You, the small towns are backward. Yeah, so you you don't really know. Like, you, you, you just, you're kind of like... You know, in well, your own little bubble. The I just Safi don't care bubble. for it. You know, I'm like older and that stuff. I mean, to hear that, <laughs> if I would have heard that one, I would. I, I don't even know if I would because I don't think people would talk that way. And so it's kind of hard for me to imagine having kids go to see that. And But maybe not, you know, because things change and I've seen the changes and so... When you call you them, you can't pretend like that the change doesn't exist or it never happens because that's just not true. You call the movie childish, but then well, you're I, saying the kids shouldn't see it. Like that doesn't make no, any sense. I don't sense. know, Mark. Okay, I just don't know. It just, <laughs> I, 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 like I said, I wanted to take the movie as a whole, and I thought it was a pretty good movie. But if you just take out p- parts of it and criticize it, that's not really fair because it's a it's a whole movie. And when you show it to whoever you're showing it to, you want them to see the whole movie. You don't want to say, okay, let's just watch this part, and then we're going to judge the whole movie by that one part. I mean, I just don't want to do that, because I don't think that's fair in this movie. And and boys should have a coming-of-age movie, too. Or, you know, they should show that, and where it was pretty, you know, this could happen to anybody. You have two best friends... They've been best friends since they were little kids. And then uh, it gets to be that they kind of go into different directions, start to go in different directions in high school. And after high school's over, they're not going to be together anymore. They may never get together again unless it's like 25 years from now or something. They have a, you know, a reunion or something or somebody's in a wedding and maybe the other guy's a best man or whatever and to be fair the 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 problem with the whole thing is that if you make a coming of age movie like this for girls you wouldn't be able to because you couldn't make it like this so they it would get so heavily yeah people would have (laughs) a fit they would say oh no this movie is creepy. It's a a, a predator movie. It's oh, a pedophile movie. Sexist, like, racist. You know, like they would just say all I these st- things. But since the movie's about boys, they can get away with all this stuff. So I would yeah. like to say that too. Yeah, it's true. It's I not. I agree. It's not like like they just don't want to make them with girls. It's like if they did, the response would be negative. Like I've seen the the girl coming of age movies that they've made that are like, like quote unquote like this and and they're so tame compared to this like that edge of 17 where like there's hardly anything in the movie like this and it's like why because if they did it, it would be ripped apart over. I don't think it would go over I, just it doesn't and I think it's unfortunate too because I think it would be fun to just have like one or two once in a while like and and to start making comedies like this again instead of uh, making a, that yeah. new movie with Jonah Hill, oh. the racist movie. I don't know. You you, don't, you wouldn't even want to watch it, so I feel like. I have to look him up because I would be curious to see, because when the movie came out, two of the main characters were of the age that they would be graduating that year. And so it really, they were right in line with the characters they were playing yeah. in terms of age. And I, but I don't know about Jonah Hill. He he seemed young too. I should look him up to see. I will how old he is, what year he was born, because it would be 
1988. Well, wouldn't you say, though, Safi, that uh, it's fine to have a movie like this because there's all sorts of different types of comedy, you know, like you have the That's Andy... The Andy Griffith Show type of comedy. You have a Spaceballs type of comedy. You have this type of comedy. And it's like, it's its own thing. Safi. Yeah. From Safi and Marco Dish out on movies. I mean, what would you say? I mean, it, well, he's 39. Being forced to watch this, was it worth it? Uh, yeah. It was. I I don't mind seeing a a boy coming of age movie. Like I said, I don't care for some of the humor, but I do have a boy who was the age that they were showing uh, of the boys in this movie. They if and he was graduating that year when it came out, which is when they were graduating too, and so uh, it's fine. I think J- Joni Hill, though, he is a, he's actually a little bit older than them. He is, uh, he was born in 1983, and if you graduate in 2007, you were born in 1988. So, he's a little bit older. I would have said, though, that, like, I thought his performance was the best comedic performance of the movie. Well, he's and then, not scared to say and do whatever yeah. he needs to do. And then Bill Haters would be the second... So I I would have said that because I really think that in these types of comedies you have to have actors who aren't afraid of what they're saying. Like you, what? Doesn't look like he's married or anything. Like you know, there's that uh, Heather's movie, and they famous they famous they 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 famously said that the, you know the girl who signed the shirt that I sent out. Uh, you know, she she had a lot of trouble just saying a swear word in the movie because she was from a certain type of family, and you know you wouldn't want her in this type of movie because that's when you make a movie like this, you have to have actors who uh, will do whatever needs to be done. Well, they they can't be afraid to do what they're supposed to do, or it yeah. shows. Even if they do it, but they're afraid. It shows that they're afraid, no matter what they do. And that would affect the performance, because it would make them hold back. Another bad thing is when you cast actors like that who uh, hold back, is that years later they'll pretend like they never wanted to do the movie, and Mm -hmm. it's a sexist movie, like Katherine Heigl. You know, she's one of the worst. and She she, has a terrible reputation. And she did this movie, Knocked Up, uh, which came before this, and it also had Jonah Hill in a little uh, funny role. Mm-hmm. And after she did the movie and it made her famous, uh, she pretended like she she should have never have done the movie, and it's a horrible, sexist movie. Oh. And it's like, you know, you didn't have any problem taking the paycheck uh, back then, but now all of a sudden it's a problem. And it's like, see, that's why you don't hire actors like her. Oh. You know, well, because yeah. that's what they do, is that they... They find ways to complain and to make up issues that don't actually exist. Okay, well, so that was movie number four. I have one more to watch, and then I will be done watching movies that Marco forces me no, to watch. No, you'll be doing that... Goosebumps. You'll be doing the Goosebumps commentary where you cry. Oh, God. And eat prune cookies and shit. Prune cookies. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. Tomorrow you will be doing a monk review. Yeah, I've got to work on that. Which hopefully season four. Hopefully that's not five hours of you explaining every episode. No, I don't want to, but I do have to go through them. Well, I know, but, but I don't. This season, I'll just say ahead of time. Uh, every episode isn't perfect. Yeah. And there's some that are you're, they're kind of I call them cringeworthy. And uncomfortable to watch and that is uh, but like we've said now when you do seasons with multiple episodes instead of having six you have like 16 that you can have a cringe worthy episode yeah. or you can have a bad episode you can take chances just don't work perfectly you can take chances but if you only have six you're not going to have much room for error and that is the problem 
with people making uh, TV nowadays, with them making so few of episodes, they are limiting themselves, they are backing themselves into a corner, they are hindering their creativity. And uh, because they're, they might have an idea, but they might have, t they, could, they could have 10 ideas, but they only can do one. If you have the opportunity to do, you have, you have 10 ideas, and you have to pick one out of the 10, that's hard. And maybe, you know, and you don't know if it's gonna work. And if you're limited to six effing episodes, that's terrible. You're really curtailing yourself. So anyway, and but this was an example of this where they, they are constantly experimenting with different types of mental health issues and things that could happen to somebody with these or this or these disorders and how they're a great detective but how do they deal with them and uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't what would you rate this movie in terms of food well, I because think we're I talking about super bad tiramisu oh a tiramisu a good one not one that they I don't even know what that was supposed Safi, to be. Safi, would they make would, in home ec class? Safi, would you eat Emma Stone's tiramisu? I don't know. It looked kind of thick and. Safi, would you eat Jonah Hill's tiramisu? No, they made it together. Safi, would you eat Michael Sarah's tiramisu? He wasn't making. He wasn't even taking it. I don't think. But they also ate. They also ate some kind of pizza bites or something. Pizza which bagels. Are, ew. Which, yeah. Yeah, but they showed it at the end. You got those for me one time when I was watching uh, the Goosebumps episodes uh, when you first ordered those for me after I got a good score on a test. Well, you wanted them <laughs> then. No, I can't, I can't remember. Like I wouldn't have just gotten those. They're gross looking. Yeah, it was it was weird. Like, we just got them, like, this one time when I was watching the Goosebumps episodes, particularly Cuckoo Clock of Doom was yes, what I was that's watching. A good one. And I was eating with pizza bagels, and I was like, these aren't very good. These are kind of like... It, like They're dry. They look dry. When I was that age, I preferred... Uh, what are those things called? Hot Pockets? I preferred Hot Pockets. Yeah, like they still have those. <laughs> I used to eat two Hot Pockets for lunch sometimes. I don't... <laughs> so I just don't eat those kinds of things, but, uh, but I'll just... So I really can't rate the movie in terms of that, but it was kind of like their favorite food. They'd get together, uh, do it overnight, and they would have those <coughs> bagel things. Safi, which part, <coughs> which part of the tiramisu is Jonah Hill? <coughs> like, let's dissect it. I don't know, Mark. Come on, you have the. She's uh, the filling, and he's the, the. Uh, Lady fingers. So you're saying she's <coughs> she, what? She's the cream filling. Yeah. Oh, and the who is a uh, who is the officers <coughs> of the law? You know. They're the bagel bites. They're the bagel bites. Yeah. No, we're we're dissecting a tiramisu. <coughs> you know, you have the different two parts elements. To a no, no, that's false. You have the coffee liqueur soaked cake you well, have maybe the coffee liqueur then you have the the, the cream <coughs> you have the the dusting of the cocoa the cocoa dusting on top which yeah, is okay very very essential to a good tiramisu uh and then you also have another thing Safi. what is it i don't know marco chocolate shavings just oh. a couple here and there to sort of top everything off and then you cut it open and you eat a piece and you go, wow, that's really good. I'm going to be a mobster now. Yeah. yeah right? That, that kind of really does epitomize the movie because on the face of it, with all that language and sexual humor. Sexual humor? Whatever you want to call it. Safi, American childish sexual humor. American horror story has so much worse stuff than this, but you you, you don't even talk about that. I with told American you that story. I'm trying to think of the movie as a whole, but mm -hmm. I'm saying 
that tiramisu, if you think of all those components put together and you take a bite out of it, it's really delicious because it's a summation or a total of all those ingredients. Would you eat tiramisu with Jonah Hill? I don't like Jonah Hill. I don't want to do anything with Jonah Hill. God, Sophie. I told you I don't like him. God. A slob. Oh. Okay, it's time to wrap it up. Well, you like slob, Sophie. Like, okay, remember, Marco. Remember the slob for MasterChef Junior? <laughs> uh, okay. So, goodbye, everybody. Bye.